Hello! We are back live on our uncorked virtual tour. Our next stop is going to be at Bellevue Orchard, where we will be able to chat with Sonia of uh, Scow Cider. And I see Scow has just come on, so we're going to go ahead and add them to the chat here. So we're just waiting for them to join us here. It'll just take a second. Thanks everybody for coming back. Hey! Hi! Hi, Jillian! How are you doing? All right, you? I'm doing pretty good, adjusting uh, to these new tours. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're doing good, though. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I think uh, maybe we'll just give folks another minute or two uh, sure. to sign on. Are you there uh, at, at the orchard today? Yes, I am. I'm in our tap room slash cafe, but it's closed. But I mean, uh, yeah, I can give a little tour. I came here because it's more quiet, so you guys can actually hear me. <laughs> perfect, yeah. perfect. And we've got some folks that are saying hi. Uh, oh, hi. Charlotte Fluelling, she's saying she's cracking open a storm cider to enjoy with hi. us. Uh, we've got some waves from uh, Jeff Hustis down in Nova Scotia, Jim Line. Uh, our friend Julie, uh, she's in a meeting, so this is really great. It's a good diversion from her meeting. <laughs> uh, we've got some cheers going on there. So so why don't we get started? We've got a few people sure. who have joined us. Oh, I see Selge is there. I oh. have to see him in the background. So No, he's not in today, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us on our second stop for our virtual tour today. My name is Jillian and I'm the owner of Uncorked Tours and I'm really excited to spend the next 30 minutes or so uh, with Sonia here, Sonia Bourgeois from Scow Cider. So I noticed that you were having a little sip of something. Um, can you yes. tell me what, uh, what you're drinking right now? So right now I'm drinking our Storm Cider and we launched it in last fall after Hurricane Dorian. So we had a bunch of fallen apples, about 15% of our apples were on the ground after the storm. It was actually our first Yupik weekend, but then we had to cancel that. So my dad uh, and the team, I was on that leave, so I can't say that I'm part of this. <laughs> and they came with the bright idea, why not make a cider with these apples? Like turn something bad into something good. So yeah, it's been very popular. It's sweeter than Scow, but it's a uh, super easy drinking. I, I enjoy. So yeah, I drank that all winter. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, so I went and I got a Scow to enjoy wow. for our little talk. <laughs> I have, a, I have another one hiding down here that I want to talk to you about uh, a little bit later on. Um, but what, uh, what can you tell me about SCOW? What, what is it that has made this product, um, in your mind, so popular uh, with the public? It seemed to almost come out of nowhere um, and it's so <laughs> popular now. So what, uh, what happened with this? Yeah, it's kind of, well, I think we kind of hit the wave at the right time, let's just say. So we started making wines around 20 years ago. And my dad fought hard to, to basically be able to make wine in this province. And then we were making a wine that was similar percentage to a cider, but it was bottled in a big bottle and the branding wasn't the best. So then my dad travels a lot for work and he came with the idea, why not? Cheers. Why not make our a cider and rebrand it, put it in a smaller bottle? So in 2014, we launched Scow. And yeah, it kind of took off. I think we made 30,000 bottles or something. We thought we had enough for a year, but then it sold in a few months. So yeah, we knew we, we had hit a, a good product. Because I mean, we've been making wine for 20 years, but people don't even know we make wine. So now Scow has been a hit, but I think it's because of the story and it's an easy drinking, refreshing drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about 
about Bellabo Orchard. I mean, this is an orchard that has been around. You guys are coming up on on a hundred years pretty <laughs> soon here. Yeah. Um, so, is is this still a family run business? Yes. So it's still my dad that runs the, the orchard. It was my grandpa and my uncle a while back, uh, but currently it's only my dad. But uh, my brother runs the day to day mostly. <laughs> my dad is taking it slower lately, which is good. I mean, he's getting old, so he needs to slow down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's a family business. It was founded in 1932. Um, so we've been growing apples in Morocco. It's been a long time. Uh, we're located beside the Piticodet River, so this part of Morocco is great for apple growing. It's like a, a mini climate. Uh, yeah, we grow around 30 varieties of apples. So we have a huge U pick in the fall that, yeah, is really nice, and we get a few thousand people a weekend. It's just a, That's a lot of people. There's not a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, it goes to nothing in the winter to crazy in the fall. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and so I know that there's a really interesting story behind the name for Scow itself. Uh -huh. So can you tell us a little bit about that and uh, where mm -hmm. that came from? Sure. So the word Scow is a, a boat. It's a flat bottom boat. And at first I thought my dad was crazy. He's like, I'm going, we're going to name it Scow. I, it's going to work. I'm like, nobody knows what Scow is. And it's like a weird word, but no, he was, he knew it was going to work. So yeah, so it's a flat bottom boat that used to be a big part of our history here. It used to go up and down the Piticodiat river to bring merchandise that used to be a daily thing. You would see Scows on the river. And right now it's not like that. I didn't grow up. Yeah. Seeing Scows, but we wanted to bring that back to Mermamco, to our to its roots. And last year, we actually went on the river on a scow. So that was fun to deliver some scow to, to Moncton. So, yeah. <laughs> so we so hope cool. to do that again. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so how, um, how, how have you always been involved with the business? And, and, and what is your role now um, yeah. with, with scow and, and with the orchard? So I was, well, I guess when I was young, I worked here um, at first it was to pick cherries and then I worked uh, in the stores. So I was, we were selling the pies and the apples and I managed the store for a little while. And we did a lot of markets back in the days, like 10, 15 years ago, we used to go to Stackville Market, uh, Shidiak, Moncton, I mean Dieppe. Um, but in 2016, my dad, he was looking for someone to really take over the, the alcohol side of the business. And he wanted to, yeah, to have someone young and he approached me. I was looking for a job. I just had graduated university. So yeah, I said, I'll try it. I mean, I'm, I didn't study any marketing or sales, but sure. So yeah, I've been with the business since 2016. And my role was to brand or market to, yeah, our wines and skull cider. So I did a lot of events, tastings and behind the scene, of course, social media. Yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff. <laughs> uh, no, that's that's great, um, and I mean it's it's so nice to see family businesses that are able to grow and change with the times, mm -hmm. um, because I mean as we're all aware of this month in particular, the times are going to change whether we're ready oh, yeah. or not. <laughs> right? Yeah, that. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so are, are you able to give us a little bit of a, a walk around of, um, you know, what someone might see if they were to come to visit you? Uh, are you, are you open now for people to come get cider or kind of give us a walk through of what people would see if they were to come to visit you today? Sure. So I'll, I'll turn my camera, but we're not open at the time because of this virus, but uh, I'll show the store. And I was thinking to it, maybe can be later on, I'll show the packing line where all of our apples are packaged. It, it's a nice, uh, I don't know, some people may have never seen that, so <laughs> could be I cool. Think the packing line is really cool. So <laughs> and it's a new packing line. So we got a new packing line last year. So it's brand new, it's huge. So yeah. Oh so my be gosh. Nice to, yeah, it would awesome. be nice to have a little yeah, take, us, take us on a little yeah. tour, Sonia. Let's let's see what's going on there at Belgium. Sure. Belgium. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. <laughs> okay, so we're sitting there, but so if you enter these doors, so this is our cafe. 
So we serve baked goods, uh, yeah, pies, muffins. But we also have coffee, but we have beer on tap and cider usually. And our kegerator. <laughs> so yeah, you can sit around. And I'll go to our little store as well where we sell our wines and merch. Yeah, so this is our little... Well, not little, it's a pretty big store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the fridges, so we have cold uh, cider and our seasonal ciders that are really great. We have three. We sell growlers. Cool. I want to come back and ask you about those in a, in a few minutes. So. Yeah, for sure. Then we have all of our wines, because we do make wine as well. That was our first, uh, we started with wines. So it's quite dark, I should have put the lights on, but... <laughs> Yeah, so this is our little store. We sell other products as well, like jams from uh, my uncle and some maple goodies. All of our merch. And so is, um, is this part of the store also closed right now uh, for the yes. time being? Yeah, okay. Yes, we closed our store safer for our staff here and obviously everyone. And sorry to start, I'm going to show you. A little ska museum since I'm here. This is a little ska. It's a. Oh, yeah. It's a little ska. <laughs> so my dad, he bought it because he really wanted it at the orchard. So it's really made from wood from an old ska. So it's legit. <laughs> yeah. I, I love, love that. Museum. That's really fun. <laughs> yeah, this is our little tasting room if you want to come try the wine. In the UK time, we often bring people in this room. It's nice and cozy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've uh, we've been super fortunate to have you host um, a few of our groups there over the True. years. You know? uh, Amber says the limited edition ciders are fantastic. <laughs> oh, <they> are. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so how did you uh, how did you guys come to the decision uh, to to branch out and start offering some of those uh, kind of taller bottles of the limited edition ciders? Well, our, that's what consumers wanted. They were always, we were going to events and tastings and like, what do you have new? Do you have something new? And we weren't really ready at the time. We, we had a hard time producing enough scow because we still are an orchard. That's our obviously main focus. We grow apples, we sell apples. So this is just a side business, I would say almost. So then we finally got organized and got our stuff together so we could start to experiment a little bit with different apples or so that's when we launched uh, Evangeline was our first limited edition and that is a rare apple that grows in New Brunswick so it's a sweeter it's a really good I think it would be one of my favorite uh, limited edition ciders okay. and wanted to call, yeah so that was our first one then we were like oh that's a hit so why not try if some others with crab apples or our organic apples and yeah, and we serve it in a bigger bottle because we we see it as a it's a limited edition. So it's just we don't do a lot of it's it's like a something you would give for a gift or it's something to to really sip and enjoy. It's not a heavy right. drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that totally makes sense. <laughs> and so, do you have um, do you have some other things in? excuse me, in the lineup, coming down the line, do you think, for, for these specialty ciders that you can share with us? Uh, not at the moment, sadly, no. So this year, there's a lot of unknowns, so we don't really know, yeah, what's going to happen. Um, no, <laughs> we don't. I mean, we might do another batch of Evangeline if we have uh, some Evangeline in the fall. And But, I mean, there, our winemaker might have some ideas that I'm not aware of. So I only started working last week. So I'm, I'm new to it, to the orchard again. So I've been out of the loop. So yeah. tell us, Sonia, where have you been for the last little while? <laughs> I've been on vacation for the last year. No, I've been on, <laughs> on mat leave. So I had a baby, he's almost one. So yeah, I was home basically. So I begged my father to come back to work. I'm like, I need to go work. <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy to be back. I'm missing I the event. That <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I miss a lot of people that need to get out of the house after that kind of eight months, nine months. It's uh, time to get back to uh, the adult world, right? <laughs> well, to, to yourself again. I would. I don't know. Like, it's fun to be home. Don't get me wrong. And it's fun to see them grow. But it's fun to have your 
a long time as well and yeah adult stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing as we kind of look forward into um a season where people are maybe staying inside a little bit mm -hmm. more uh, we've seen a lot of different producers start to develop delivery programs or, mm -hmm. or sales programs. You guys have always had really great distribution through NB Liquor um, from the beginning. Yeah. So I'm kind of wondering what uh, what's the talk down at your end in terms of you know mm -hmm. how you want to get your product into the hands of the people that really want to drink it over the next say two weeks to two months. Yeah, exactly. At first we weren't too concerned because we're like. Oh, it's not going to last long. And I mean, our products are, we're lucky to be in grocery stores, so Superstore and Sobeys and liquor stores. But uh, we're thinking of maybe partnering up with someone in Moncton, a brewery in Moncton, to do deliveries because at the orchard right now, well, first of all, we're outside of the city, as you know. So it's a little ways for us to do home deliveries. But, and we're quite busy with our apples, actually. It's kind of crazy. We had our busiest March yet this March, so. Yeah, it's so it's weird. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, people eat more at home, right? So they're stuck at home. And so now we're thinking, yeah, we approached a few breweries and that's maybe a, our go-to to be able to deliver directly to people's home. If not, I mean, yes, we're available in stores, but not everyone wants to get out of the house or are able to, to go to the liquor store or grocery store. So yeah, that's yeah. Our, our plan, but we'll see. I mean, it's in the works. Yeah. Well, and it's, um, you know, it's so different now because so many of us have used the different events and the festivals and, and they were becoming exactly. ubiquitous, right? People were thinking like, oh, it's another festival. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting <laughs> now to yeah. look at the calendar and see the next 12 months or, I mean, a few are still on the books, but to see that next but 12 we don't months know. festivals. Uh, you know, you don't have that contact with your fans anymore. And that's right? what, it was my favorite part of the job. And I think it was what worked for us as well. Like to, yeah, to be able to talk face to face and have them try your product, even tastings. Like we used to do a little bit of tastings in grocery stores or liquor stores, but now it's not a lot. Like, so it changes our job for sure. It's, it's going to be different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you almost... I mean, anyone who has tried your product knows, and, and they'll be happy to get it, but you, you almost people need that. to turn those people into your ambassadors so that they're convincing their friends to try it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> trying it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be different. Um, yeah. Uh, so you had mentioned giving us a little tour of the production. Oh, the packaging line. The apple, the apple line, the packaging line. Can we, yeah. uh, can we go for a run down there, or is the Wi-Fi sure. going to cut out on us? I think I'm safe. I put my data on, so it should be good. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, because it's quite big in here, as you may know. But okay, so I'm gonna walk. It's not, it's not sexy, but you'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's pretty darn sexy. It's uh, yeah. It's a lot of storage. It's big. <laughs> so I'll go to the packing line. And so for everybody yeah. who just joined us now. Um, we are visiting Belge Beliveau. We're here with Sonia Bourgeois um, and I'm Jillian with Uncorked Tours and this is our virtual tour here. We are heading into their apple packaging facility. Hmm, looks like we uh, you might struggle to, to stay in the packaging line. The thing that I really love about the packaging line uh, is that it's just like an episode of how it's made. I've had a chance to visit full production tour. Um, so it's uh, <laughs> it's a really, really, really funky sort of spot. Sonia was just saying that um, they had just invested in a brand new packaging line. Uh, so this is a, a family and this is a business that is continuing to invest um, in the community and in their business so that they can keep growing. Sorry about that. <laughs> it did quite. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's amazing what a giant steel room will do to your connectivity, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I even tested it beforehand, but no, no, too much. Uh, and yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> we tried. No, that's fine. 
Um, let's uh, let's get back to to the products uh, that that you guys make on the alcohol side again. So we talked a little bit about Scow and about Storm Cider. Um, I have a bottle of your blueberry wine. Yes, <laughs> hanging out here. I actually have a bottle of the sparkling apple. It's uh, it's in the <laughs> wine rack right now. Um, so you said that you had been making wine for a while. I don't know if that's going to mm -hmm. focus there. Um, is that something that that you guys want to to continue to do? Are you moving your focus more towards the cider? Um, what what's kind of your your plan when it comes here? I know you planted a few grapes um, a few years ago. So what's what's going on on that side of of the experimental business? <laughs> yeah. So for the wines, um, well, so yeah, we've been making wine for twenty years, but we narrowed our our wine. So we used to make I, I don't know maybe around ten different wines at least. And we had a few different apple wines, and we have a raspberry wine, and we had a cherry. So we decided to pick our top seller and narrow it down to our three wines. So now, and we rebranded, I'm not, I'm sure you are aware. So we rebranded a few years ago to Crooked Wines. So the story behind that is because, yeah, we needed to revamp our labels, and then we decided why not go with something kind of like style that represents the value in Memram Cook and represents our business. So we went with crooked because it means it. Uh, so Memram Cook means crooked river in Mi'kmaq. So that's why our wines, okay. we call them crooked wines. And on the front label, like you shown, that's the outline of the Memram Cook River. So the gold line, that is the Memram Cook River. And behind is the Pitikodiak River and the orchard is situated between those two rivers. So that was the, the story we wanted, I guess, to share with everyone. And so we make an apple wine, of course, because we're in an apple orchard. That's what we started with. It's a really great sparkling apple wine, which inspired us to make our scow cider, basically. And we decided we had pears as well one year that we were going to lose. So that's when we decided, why not try to make a wine with pears? So our winemaker, uh, yeah, he was experimenting with everything we had here, cherries, uh, raspberries. So then, yeah, we Funny, made pear the, wine. The pear wine, the pear wine <laughs> is one of my favorite New Brunswick wines. I love it, and it's of course the only one I don't have here at home, right? <laughs> like I have, I have the other two, and I like them as well, but I don't have any pear <laughs> wine, and there's one reason for that. <laughs> you, you can't, it doesn't say no. <laughs> but uh, no, pear wine, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites too. And so yeah, we kind of. It was like a mis not a mistake, but you know what? The best inventions are just random, but that's what happened with our pear wine. It was just random. So then year after year, we decided to make wine with our pears. Um, and then the blueberry, well, we wanted to have a red wine and we didn't, we weren't producing any fruit to make a red wine. So then we decided why not outsource some local blueberries and try to make a blueberry wine. So yeah, that's how our three wines uh, kind of got invented, I would say, or yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And we actually, oh, sorry. No, we actually have a, a deal going on right now at NBL. It just started today, and it's for our wine. So you get three dollars off for yeah our crooked. Uh, yeah. Three dollars <laughs> off. That's I awesome. think it's three dollars for three bottle. Maybe uh, I'm not even aware. It's brand new to me, but yes. So NBL <laughs> stores, most of the stores. <laughs> Yeah, salsa, he's in the loop, but uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so we just had a question here from Charlotte. Uh, she was asking, do you do you know the dryness factor on the three mm -hmm. crooked wines? What would be their, their kind of dry mm -hmm. number? Or they're all one. Level? The sweetness, yeah, the sweetness level, they're all one, yeah. So okay. not, not super sweet for a fruit wine. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I find... Um, that's really awesome, and I find that the pear wine, in a similar fashion to a Riesling, uh, because it's so fruity, it can taste a bit sweeter, but it's not, actually. So it's one of those wines that, for me, it's just perfect for any of the spicy dishes or spicy soups or kind of big, heavy dishes, because it just floats right through. So I, I love <laughs> it for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So we are getting kind of close to the end of our time together. Um, I was wondering if uh, you wanted to take everybody to the door and give them a bit of a panoramic view sure. um, of your of your orchard pre-bloom. I know we're we're still a, a month or so away, but <laughs> have you been doing a lot of pruning this time of year? Yes, yes, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, we're. I mean, we don't have a lot of. We don't have our full staff, but we have been, yeah, very productive with pruning, <laughs> for sure. So this is not exciting, but yeah, minute. I mean, it may not be exciting, but it's got to be done. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our grapes actually right in front, which, uh, yeah, we do grow a little bit of grapes. Right now, we actually give it to the winery in Miramco because we don't use them yet, but yeah, it's maybe something for the future. <laughs> Okay, is that the latitude 46? Yes, yeah, latitude 46, yeah. yes. Yeah. So yeah, I can see some of our old apple trees and newer apple trees. And this is our Yupik shed. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, and then we have apple trees across the street as well. Mm -hmm. And you can even see our offices. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it's not a pretty time. I mean, it's better when everything is green, but yeah, still nice. Well, I mean, it will come, right? Spring oh, yeah. will come and uh, it'll happen. I love uh, you guys have really put a huge investment into your space over the last, I mean, every year you invest, but over the last oh, handful of years, I mean, the new offices and pergola absolutely look amazing. Such a great spot. Yeah, well, we needed to have something for washrooms and we wanted to have offices where we're actually all in the same office. My dad used to be in the little trailer, not sure if you remember, but it was not efficient and we didn't have any area to have meetings. And yeah, so this was a great, uh, great investment. I mean, it was definitely a big move, but worth it. And we can have buses now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's so great. And uh, you had, this past summer, you had food trucks coming out as well, is that right? Uh, during the fall, so during the fall we had uh, the ba Le Barbu was um, at the orchard, and we had a food truck every weekend. That was so fun, I mean, it's something we want to have again this year if it's possible, but yeah, so people were just hanging out outside, having a drink, and getting some food. It was a nice ambiance for sure oh that's awesome that's awesome mm -hmm. um so listen is there is there anything else that uh you would like to to say that the, to the folks that are watching or that you'd like to to share about scal or or belgie belly Beau or or <laughs> anything i don't know huh put me on the spot well thank you for listening first of all this is our my first live so this was stressful a little bit but um yeah, it's fun that you got the idea to do this and then we can show people what, what we do and some people haven't been to the orchard yet, so it's nice to, to be able to have a visit without being here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, and that was one of the fun things I, I see. Uh, Esty just joined us here. Um, I hadn't been to the new brewery at his place either, so um, this is really fun for me. I'm getting to see some people and some places I have been, but some places that I haven't even had a chance yeah. to, to check I mean, out, there's right? So many, there's so many breweries now and yeah, cideries and distilleries. So yeah, I understand. I haven't been to every one of them, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, then I guess I'll, I'll close it close it off now um, by saying thank you so, so much, Sonia, for welcoming us into your space. I know that this is a, a crazy and dynamic time as, as we all yeah. try to adapt and adjust. Um, but, you know, I, I look forward to the chance when you and I get to uh, sit down and have a pint in person uh, <laughs> and talk about, you know, all of the uh, changes that, that we were able to make. Um, and mm -hmm. to, to everyone that stayed with us, thank you again for joining us on our on our virtual <laughs> tour today at Scow Cider at Belge Bellibo in Memram Cook. Um, these tours are being offered, of course, free of charge, but we have set up a virtual tip hat 
on our webpage. So if you want to check out uncorkedmb.com and leave a tip, uh, every toonie or every twenty really goes a long way to help us through this time and to create content like this. Uh, and if you do decide to tip fifty or more dollars, we'll actually credit that with a dollar for dollar gift card that you can use on a future tour or you can use in our tasting room when we hopefully open in the spring at the market. Um, so again, Sonia, uh, I hope you guys stay safe and, and healthy over the coming months. Um, and, and thank you so, so much for, for welcoming, welcoming us into your space. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You did a fabulous job, by the way. Uh, thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers. Bye.